Hi, Errol here. The idea is to make a box for marbles, plain marbles, glass marbles, with marbles inside, without breaking the tools and without breaking the marbles and without breaking the box. Um, so stick around and I'll show you my 3D um, idea of uh, making this box. I think the wood is yellow wood or something similar to that. It's very easy to work with, but it's very porous and it, it gives me some problems. The blue thing that you saw, that, will, that was the size of the vessel that I'm going to use for resin. Um, and the idea is to create uh, tracks, like uh, racing tracks, and put them together and put some marbles on top of it. Have a look at it, see what you think. You will see that three lines, uh, actually two lines, and th there is a line in the middle over there. This line in the middle, I'm not going to cut it, just a mark. And on this one, I'm going to place the marbles. Um, I hope you understand. Uh, I'm sure you do. But you'll see it now. In the next step, you'll see what I mean by that now. The next three or four steps, you'll see what I mean by that. So the idea is to create rings. And then, then I will cut those rings and create a shape. And everything was going perfectly by the plan. No problem whatsoever. Till the last one, as usual. I'm using the black line parting tool, cuts those things like butter. And um, here it is, exactly what I mean. Boom, gone. But it's okay because I have to cut them in two anyway. So creates the spiralic that looks like a spring or a spiralic or a downhill race trick. It's in my head, it looks like that. Maybe somebody will tell me that I'm smoking something illegal. But uh, that's, it looks a little bit like a racetrack. Um, you know those children racetrack? That's, I've, I'm trying to get to this uh, situation. And now I'm creating the, the track himself where I'm going to put those on and then I'll put the resin on. And um, you won't believe it. Okay, CA to the rescue. I managed to glue it back and um, I'll continue with the project as it was. It's very porous, like I said, and it gave me a little bit of problems. And I'll show you when I put the resin, you'll see um, some of the wood sucked in the resin. It was a little bit of a problem to work with it, but uh, we managed. Now that's the idea behind it. And you'll see now, uh, that's why I done the groove in the middle of the groove. I'm putting, I'm putting the, the marbles. And the reason for in my in my head was that the reason for it is that I will know that they sit in the middle. So when I um, work on the lathe later, I will not destroy. I will not touch them because they move left or right, and they will be. Some of them will be closer to the edge, and some of them will be out of the edge. Um, and now the whole thing goes into. Um, into a vessel, into this blue vessel that you show, I show you earlier, and I'm going to put it with resin. And here I found the first problem with that um, problem uh, that I managed to solve was that the resin got sucked slightly into the wood because of the wood got um, very porous and it gave me a lot of bubbles and it's. It came out quite easy from the pressure pot and um, now I'm creating a, a proper tenant so I can start holding it on this side and start working on the other side. I love it when you cut and you've got this long strings of uh, resin. It's really, really nice and it creates like a, 
uh, in the environment of uh, Halloween. Maybe I'll do something like that for Halloween. I don't know. It's a good idea. You'll see the tenet is quite a big tenet. And I'm replacing the chuck to a chuck with bigger jaws. Because I wanted to have much more. Uh, I wanted to hold it stronger. And not to be worried that it will uh, break off uh, on small jaws with a small tenet. After I cleaned it up and everything, I discovered that it looks like the base is too narrow. It's, it's too shallow, sorry, too shallow. So what I've done is I, I, I changed the design a little bit and I added resin and put it back into the pressure pot. So I actually added an extra um, two centimeters of resin. At this stage, I think you can see already the lines <coughs> sorry, of the wood coming out and it's actually center, so I'm quite happy with it. I'm cutting a small piece in the end because it, it had big bubbles inside and I couldn't work with it and I was afraid to do it normally, so I just cut it off with the, with the parting tool. And I'm creating now um, a recess, so I'll be able to work on the other side. Uh, but that will be the bottom, uh, the base of it. So I need I need to have a recess over there. Um, but I'm going to do some more changes. You will see a little bit later because I hit the wood again, and I said no, it's uh, I I think that it's 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 a problem, and I'll have to put some more resin again again. You can see the crack that I've got over there, and that's why I need to put some more resin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hollow it a little bit more, and I'm going. I, I decided to change also the design, and I'm going to do a groove on the side. And I, I hope to see the groove that I'm doing now. And what I'm going to do in this groove, because I'm already changing and add, adding some resin, I'm going to put in this groove. I'm going to put um, marbles, and they will be as the base. In the, you will see them in the base. I thought it will give it another dimension. Um, and now going back and I'm creating um, a recess again. This time, um, hopefully to, it will work perfect. Trying to to make it square nicely, I, I took from work. I took a, a rubber mallet, a rubber uh, handle that my panel beaters are, are using uh, to f to sandpaper it f straight and flat. So I tried to see how it works, and it worked quite nice. And you can see here that you can see already the the, the marks of the wood. Uh, and because that's why I was not worried that I'm going to go into the marbles, is because if I don't go deeper, I won't touch the marbles. And here I'm doing the same paper all the way to 600. After the same paper, I'm doing uh, I'm with uh, with pads that I'm using wet pads. And um, after that, I'm going to do with um, Novas uh, 3 to 1. Now what I'm going to do is I'm starting to hollowing it all the way um, with the biggest uh, drill that I've got, not big enough. And now I will have to hollow it uh, with step by step uh, with the carbine tools. So I'm using um, the square and the V-shape from Blackline, and I'm taking it step by step. I'm not running straight through. I'm doing one step, another step, another step, and that this way uh, it will be easier. Now the bottom, you can see I'm using the square tip, the carbine square tip, and that's easy to remove 
the bottom wood that left in the bottom. I think when I worked it over there, I overheated it and, and there was a wobbling because of the resin. So I decided to put a, a wooden, to glue in with hot gun glue a, a wooden tenant and work on this one because I was worried that it will break the resin. I, I think I, I gone too close and took too thin to it and um, I decided not to take a chance. So in the groove over there, I created a, a tenant and, and, I, and I glued it with the hot gun glue. That will be the, the lid that I'm planning to do. I just clean it now with alcohol and I'm going here all the way to 600, not more than that. I don't do the water pad and I don't do the polish and I'll show you later why not. I'm creating for the, um, for the lid, I'm creating a, a one, on one side will be a tenant and the other side will be a recess. And you will see now how I work both ways. I have a recess on this side that you didn't see that I drilled on my drill and now I'm going to put um, a tenant on this side so I will be able to work on both sides that will be um, my upper of the lid and where is the um, where is the recess will be the inner part of the lid so after I'm now that will be the in part of the lid and now I'm creating the the lid himself and square it down to the size of the of the box and now I'm going to do the the inside of the box so it will sit nicely tight. The wood is like I said before it's very porous so just to get it a better shine on this one what I'm going to do is on both sides I'm going to put first a uh, wood sealer, solar light wood sealer and then I'm going to go to uh, 600 with um, sandpaper Yorkshire grid and after the Yorkshire grid I'm going to use a wax uh, finish a wood wax finish, bee wax, and remember when you work with bee wax that you put it on a few times but you have to go to high speed later to burn it inside, to actually melt it inside the wood and it sits very nicely into the wood and you can see the shine and the flip, even though this wood doesn't have a big shine, the, um, the um, polish, the, the wax, because it's gone inside will bring up the shine of it. Decided last minute to put another feature to the to the box. Maybe it's a little bit kitschy. I don't know, but I like it. What do you think? Tell me, what do you think? Is it too kitschy? Is it too... I don't know. I like it. Like I said earlier, that's why... That's the last... That's another step that I'm doing. Is I could not get it to, sh to shine through properly, so I'm putting resin inside and it will bring the shine out. You know, I'm quite happy with the result of this project. Um, so if you like it, uh, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up and, uh, uh, and give some remarks. I'll, I've got some bubbles in this one that doesn't make, I don't like it, but the bubbles are inside there, so there is nothing I can do. I'll have to find another solution, maybe a different resin, uh, a very slow uh, resin, so it doesn't give me so many bubbles. But I'll uh, maybe I'll put it in a pressure in in a vacuum chamber first. I don't know. I'll find a solution. Till the next one. Thank you very much, and have a magical day.